Okay, we are back in here. Um, we just finished up the first two uh, portions of the four-step process, the state, the plan. So now we're talking about the do. This is all of our calculations. So there's a few things we're gonna report here. We're gonna report what? We're gonna report a sketch. We're gonna report degrees of freedom. We're gonna report the p-value. And the p-value is really coming from our test statistic. So that's our first part. The test statistic, is coming from that formula, the observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected, and you're gonna add up all those. When you add them all up, you get 11.2. I think it's much faster, easier, and more accurate if you use your calculator. So you have to enter these values into two lists. So make sure you hit stat, edit, and then you're gonna enter in list one, 32, 20, 16, and 12 into list one. Then you're gonna enter in list two, 20, 20, 20, 20. And then you hit what? Stat, test, scroll all the way down to chi-squared goodness of fit test, and then prompt the observed list is list one, the expected list is uh, list two, and then what would be the degrees of freedom in here? Remember, degrees of freedom is the number of choices within your variable minus one. So in this uh, particular evaluation, it's not 12 in here. I know there's 12 months of the year, but it's not 12 minus one. We kind of grouped the months together into quarters in here. So we had four different choices within our categorical variable. So four minus one is three. So here's our sketch. Keep in mind, our degrees of freedom is three. So that would put us a peak at one because it's two minus that. So that's how we're getting this right skewed graph in here. Uh, our chi-squared statistic from our calculator, if you do that with our calculator, is going to be 11.2. And that's the line in the sand that we have right here. And underneath this is all the shaded, and that's our p-value. And our p-value using table C would lie somewhere between one and 2%. That's our p-value. If you're using a calculator, which I really want you to do, you're gonna see the p-value is 0.0106. That's the value I got. So, and that makes sense because table C is saying it's somewhere between one and 2% with degrees of freedom of three. And um, what are these green values? Well, the green value is since our 11.2 is, our chi-squared, we had to find where, where is our chi-squared? Is it trapped between these two values? No. Is it trapped between these two values? Yes, it is. So notice it's closer to 11.34 than it is a 9.84, which makes sense because the official p-value is closer to 0.01 than it is to 0.02. So yes, table C has some restrictions uh, limitations, I should say. That's why I would like to use your calculator to make sure you're getting the exact p-value uh, from the chi-squared statistic. Okay, and finally, this is the easiest part. These are the conclusions we've been making for significance tests for quite a while. Keep in mind, this is officially a chi-squared test. So what is our final conclusion? Because the p-value of 0.011 is less than the alpha of 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. We have convincing evidence that the birthdays of NHL players are not evenly distributed across the four quarters of the year. So that book's theory of, of uh, people born in the earlier months of the year uh, versus players born in the later months of the year, um, that holds true here. We do have convincing evidence that the uh, the people that are most successful at the highest level were born in the earlier months. So that is the conclusion of um, the first section, but we have some more examples to go over. Uh, notice the last thing in here was to conduct a follow-up analysis. Now the follow-up analysis is related to your calculator. If you put your calculator into your hand right now, Notice you're going to see that thing that says CNTRB. That really stands for a contribution. Basically, which of these four values here is contributing 
the most um, in, in terms of which of these four values is getting us to this 11.2. And so it breaks down these four values here in your calculator on the, the contribution thing. You could see, if you scroll over, you can see 7.2, then 0.8, and then point, excuse me, 0, then 0.8, then 3.2. So notice these months in here are the months that it's really driving this particular number really high. And if it wasn't, if that wasn't the case, then um, this probably wouldn't lead to rejecting the null hypothesis. So keep in mind, we are gonna be doing some follow-up analysis here uh, in some other examples, and that's gonna be really breaking down uh, which, which values are giving us uh, more, or, or are giving us more, or are raising the chi-squared value, I should say, okay? I'll be back in um, a few minutes.